Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Petersburg at the corner of 8th and Jackson in front of a, a rather humble small home which was the boyhood home of the author Edgar Lee Masters. And you may know him as the author of Spoon River Anthology, for which he became one of the most famous, famous authors in America at the time of, of its writing, around 1915. And Kathy Olson, you and your, your group, who have sustained this museum and kept it going, have seen a lot happen through the years, but around 1960 or so, this home was moved here. It was a few mm -hmm. blocks away where they wanted to build a new school, and it was moved down here. Um, and it sort of had a languishing history until you all uh, started started working on it again. Yeah, in the um, 60s, 1960, they moved it down. We have people that talk about how, um, as a boy, they remember seeing the house come down the hill, mm -hmm. and uh, they tore the opera house down, put this house here. Um, Sam Blaine uh, had it done. Uh, his father, Frank Blaine, was childhood friends with Edgar Lee Masters. Uh -huh. So he wanted to have this house here and always be the Masters' home. There were different different boards over the years. Um, and then we became a board last August. Mm -hmm. And so the house had been shuttered for a couple years. So we uh, had our work cut out for us. Um, but the, lucky enough, we have always been uh, associated with the Garden Club. Since the 1960s, the Menard County Garden Club has maintained the grounds beautifully and um, a very dedicated group of ladies. So they have done the plantings and maintained everything. They put in the walks well, and they've done Let's walk up that way a just lot. a little bit. Let's just go up right okay. up here because uh, we get a chance to see. I mean, and we're lucky because here it is late in the season and things haven't frozen yet. Things are still blooming. Oh, well, because they come in different times of the year and they add stuff. They mm -hmm. deadhead and they add stuff. Mm -hmm. And we did have a lot more plantings in here, but um, the south side of this house, we had to totally redo. Uh, it's brand new siding, brand new cedar siding was installed. And uh, through the generosity of our community, um, because we do not get funds from anybody, yeah. our sole source of income is um, uh, donations. It looks terrific, it so, looks terrific. So uh, people donated to do the windows. So we did the seven windows on this side, mm -hmm. and then we did the siding. And uh, because, I mean, siding, you could just, it just crumbled in your hand. Same with the windows. The windows were, were ready to fall out. Yeah. So uh, through fundraising, we had a fundraiser, and through just, we just put it out there that we needed help. Yeah. And people. Community came up, huh? Yes, they did. It's, it's, we've had an amazing amount of yeah. community support. I mean, it's, it's really very touching. And, uh, but we're not done yet. We have to replace the whole front porch. Mm -hmm. It's rotted. We have a rotten uh, header beam mm -hmm. and the floor is rotten. You can see that when you walked yeah, up. Yeah. The steps are rotted and we need to do some chimney work. So we're still fundraising. You've got, you've got a good start though. You've got a good start oh, and it's open, start. It's, it's open for people to come in and, yep. and roam around. And yep. during this program, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna mm -hmm. roam through the house. But there's also a lot of documentation and books, et cetera, and photographs oh, in there. Yeah. And the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum has partnered with yeah. you to save some of the items that you had. So that's what this program is gonna be about yeah. today. Because they're amazing. I mean, uh, we didn't even know what we had. And then they came out um, and started going through the files mm -hmm. and the boxes of stuff. Some of the stuff was stored in a closet. Some of it was stored in the a musty basement. And we didn't know what we had, but we knew that it needed to be preserved and we could not do it. Mm -hmm. um, the climate is just not right here. Ian Hunt came out from the ALPLM and said, hey, you know, let me help you. And we've got a wonderful partnership with them now. Um, Catherine Masters, the granddaughter of Edgar Lee has been involved. She was there when we handed the stuff over to the ALPLM. Mm -hmm. They had a, a news conference and everything. Um, but everything uh, is being preserved. Some pictures and documents are being restored yeah. because they were stored under yeah, such bad yeah. um, conditions. And um, everything that we have, then they are going to give us a listing back and we can have it on our computer. But the big thing is they have it on their, I mean, everybody, yeah in the world can see our collection. Uh, they told us ours was probably one of the biggest yeah. ELM collections and we didn't know what we had, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, so it's, they're great people to mm -hmm. work with. Well, we're gonna get a chance to talk to them later in the okay. program. But for right now, I think I wanna go inside. Let's, okay. let's go inside. Let's go inside. 
Bobby Lipsky, I want to go back outside later on in the program to look at the gardens because the gardens that surround the house are beautiful. But when you walk inside, the first thing you do is you walk into what would have been the family, the Masters family living room. Yes. And Edgar Lee Masters lived in this house from the time he was just a baby until he was about 11 years old. So there's a lot of history here and a lot of to learn about the family here yes. in the Edgar Lee Masters home, isn't there? Actually, he lived here from about the time he was seven or eight until 11. He lived in three different houses in Petersburg. Oh, is that right? Yes. Okay. But so, he was in Petersburg but, as a baby. Okay. As a baby for, until he was 11, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And they moved to Lewiston at that point. And, and this house that we're in now at 8th and Jackson was moved here. It was originally several blocks away. Yes. And it was moved to make way for a new school, I guess. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. yes. So, so, but here it sits, and it has sit, sat here since the 60s. Yes. And it is a very charming museum, Thank and you all have a lot to be proud Thank of. Thank you. Thank you. If we look just behind you, we get a really good look at Edgar Lee Masters oh, himself. Yes. He's, yes. he's best known, of course, for Spoon River Anthology, but he also wrote like 50 books. He wrote biographies and history, and he wrote all kinds mm -hmm. of things, didn't he? Yes. He wrote a biography of uh, Rachel Lindsay. Mm -hmm. He wrote um, oh, seven plays, five biographies, just a lot. He, if we look beyond you here, just into this cabinet, what you all have done is th these are all. Origi these are these first, are first editions, These right? are first editions of the majority of his 54 mm -hmm. books. Uh, Spoon River Anthology is not in that cabinet. It's in a different cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, he was a very, very, very prolific. prolific writer. And, and the interesting thing about him was he was practicing law all his, yes. almost all his life at the same yes. time. So yes. Yes. he was doing all this yes. writing, yes. all the poetry, all yes. the biographies, all yes. the, and, uh, and, and practicing yes. law at the same time. He was an excellent lawyer. He uh, practiced with Clarence Darrell in Chicago. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of wonderful cases, made money. But he didn't like law. He liked yeah. writing poetry. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, I mentioned that the house had been moved here, and this gives yes. us a good chance to, to oh, look. Okay. This is this is what the house looked like at its original location before it was moved. And as you can see, it's got an addition on the side here, or right. actually on the back of the house that is no longer here. Right. I'm assuming that would have been maybe the dining room or something like that. I that, think so. Summer kitchen, dining room, mm -hmm, area to eat. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the house is smaller now than it was then. Yes, it is. Um, okay, and, and we've got a picture of him. But this is interesting over here because, oh, we mentioned Spoon River Anthology, and I've got to show this before we get too far. This is um, a very old copy, and uh, I'm going to very carefully turn this because it's trying to fall apart on us. But the, what's neat about this is that he's actually signed this. It says, um, to dear cousin Edith Masters, with great affection, Edgar Lee Masters, and this is 1936. And we're going to learn more about Edith because he really was very fond of Edith, oh, wasn't yes, he? Oh, yes, very. And she was largely responsible for the museum. Mm -hmm. And the table, the table here that we see um, that the book is on, this was his working desk at the for Chelsea, years and At years. the Chelsea Hotel in New York, this was, this was his working desk. Mm -hmm. And it was given to us by his uh, wife, uh, uh, Ellen, and his son, Hillary. Mm -hmm. We're very proud to have it in mm -hmm. our collection. Yeah, and you and think of all the, th all, yes. all, all the hours and all oh, the thoughts and my. all the musings and yes. writings that went yes. on sitting at this desk. Absolutely. And creating all the characters, oh. whether they were actually factual or not. Yes. And there's a lot of discussion about yes. that with Spoon River, yes. isn't there? Whether yes. these were real people or mm -hmm. whether... whether Part uh, of them were real people, and mm -hmm. he calls them by their real name. And part were fictional characters who people recognized in the community mm -hmm. as their cousins, their mm -hmm. grandfathers, their next door neighbor. Yeah. That's why it was not well received and, in and this he, area. Well, he, made, he did, he made a lot of enemies because oh, yes, he was telling yes. secrets, you know, right. wasn't he? Yes, these people <laughs> were from their grave telling their, you know, <laughs> deepest secrets of love and romance yeah. and murder and yeah. whatever. Oh, it's my just goodness. crazy good. Uh, this is this is an interesting cabinet over here, and let's let's stand oh, by yeah. because it's 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 under glass, and it's kind of hard for us to see. But we can see what it looks to be a death. Is that a death yes, mask? Yes, that's of the Masters? death mask of Edgar Lee Masters. It sure, certainly does. A lot of those don't look like the person at all. Here, over in this corner too, we can see this is at his funeral where his casket is being carried. 
probably to the hearse. I'm not sure what the, what the uh, uh, what the incident there is, but uh, carrying out of a church and, and to the hearse. And he's he's actually buried here in Petersburg, he's buried, isn't he? He's buried in Petersburg, and uh, he wanted to come back to Petersburg for his funeral because Petersburg was his heart's home. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wrote so many beautiful poems about Petersburg and about this area. Yeah. It's just, it's amazing, but uh, that picture was uh, primarily the pallbearers were lawyers and judges mm -hmm. from this area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's move in there. If, if, if you visited the master's home, uh, you probably wouldn't have gotten to come in this room because it was no, the bedroom. it was the bedroom. And, and mom and dad slept in here. Yes. And, and I guess the it was kind of like a nursery too because it was yes, a small home, small so if the kids were small. Yes, the children would have stayed here as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and and what you've done here, this is the, what I want to focus on in this room is is the stamp yes. because he was one of the very first writers to have a stamp. He was in 1970. They they dedicated this stamp in his honor, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was an amazing ceremony. People from all over the state came to. To honor yeah, him. and you can see that's what this that's what this it is all about huge. here, and you can see all the letters that have yes. the, the stamps on them because people wanted that commemorative stamp. Yes. Yes. Um, his grandchildren came, his uh, children came. It was a big day in Petersburg. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna learn too that that uh, he he was he was nationally he, at the time when when Spoon River Anthology was published, he became the preeminent poet. Instantly, in, in America. Instantly, yes. Um, and we're going to learn that not only was he very popular, but he also was invited by President Roosevelt to visit with him and have an audience yes. with the president. Yes. And we have somebody here from the Presidential yes. Museum who has some of those materials, so we get to see that. Yes. But this is, and here's a, here's a good picture of him, too. I guess this oh, is I him as a very picture. young man, yes. isn't it? Yes, yes. Very, very yes. Uh, 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 fashionable uh, young man. And then we have over just to the left, you can see him... Uh, Edgar Lee Masters, American poet. That's a picture of him, and he's in the graveyard. Um, the hill, probably. On the hill, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the hill is in Lewiston. Oh, oh, that's of course. That's yes. where the characters were from yeah. for for Spoon River Anthology. Okay. And isn't it kind of ironic that he didn't choose to be? He chose. He chose to be buried here, and not in not in Lewiston, where where the where he wrote. He loved Petersburg. He loved the people of Petersburg. When he wrote Spoon River Anthology, it's so interesting because he he showed the people of Petersburg in a very favorable light. Mm -hmm. Where the people in Lewiston, not so favorable. <laughs> but it could have been because uh, as a young boy, he had such wonderful experiences here. Mm -hmm. And also, he came back regularly to visit his grandparents, who lived on a farm just north of mm -hmm. Petersburg. And he loved his grandparents yeah. dearly. Let's go see them because they're, okay. they're, we have uh, portraits of them. You first. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want you me to go to first? Yeah. Um, Grandma and Grandpa are in here. And uh, this, this would have been the, the, the family parlor. parlor. This is the parlor. Uh -huh. And, and yes. very, very nicely appointed, too. And we'll talk about that. But you talk. Squire they, Masters. Th and this was uh, his, his uh, grandfather. grandfather. Okay. His and grandfather. they lived on a farm near yes. Petersburg. Yes. And the family, Masters' parents, actually moved here to be closer to them, yes. didn't they? That's uh -huh. why they're here. Yes. And Grandma's over here. Oh, yes. Grandma's Lucinda, Lucinda. Young Masters, yes, is over Lucinda. here. Lucinda. Mm -hmm. Yes. They were kind, wonderful, loving people, not like his mother and his father, but we'll talk about. And we'll talk about that. And then just to the right is young Edith. We talked about him signing the book yes, for Edith. Yes, Edith, Edith. Um, and a second cousin, I guess, and yes. he's so fond of her. Very fond. And Edith actually left the assets of a farm mm -hmm. uh, to, to be given in, in his memory. And also in his memory, the room we're standing in, the parlor here, is uh, is actually the furnished by Edith. Largely, Edith had a lot of this largely, furniture. Largely, yes, her. yes. Lar most of the furniture in this room belonged to Edith Masters, mm -hmm. and she donated it to the museum. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, yeah, fantastic. So yes. even though, yeah, this probably yes. Edgar Lee Masters may never have seen some of this furniture. No. It's the right period, and it's from the family. So he it might makes have all the seen it in her home because mm -hmm. he would visit uh, Edith mm -hmm. frequently. But this clock, which is adorable, isn't it? Uh, it is. It was given to uh, it was given to the Masters family by uh, Thomas Davis Masters. They called him T.D. He's a brother mm -hmm. of Edgar Lee Masters, and they gave it to the parents. And then Edgar Lee got a hold of it, and uh, 
it was in his home in Chicago where mm -hmm. he wrote to Spoon River mm -hmm. and a lot of other books. What a great yes, connection. It is. Okay, now if we turn, let's go this way because I wanted to talk about his parents just a little bit. You, you mentioned that the very, very attractive couple. They're a very handsome but, but couple. But they were fighting all no, the time. No, they did not they? get along with one another. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hardin Masters was a lawyer, practiced here in Petersburg. Actually, he practiced in Kansas, then they moved to Petersburg. Mm -hmm. He practiced law. He was a state's attorney, moves to Lewistown. Mm -hmm. He practices law in Lewiston. He becomes the mayor. He becomes the state's attorney. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he was a great guy. And his wife, Oh, I don't know what to say about her, <laughs> other than um, she was very disappointed in Harden, mm -hmm. and they bickered a lot. Yeah. Uh, so that wasn't a relation, a love relationship like you have with the grandparents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but then just right down here too, I think I love we can that see this. Picture. This is a really good That's picture. That's such a tender picture. Um, this is Edgar Lee Masters with his youngest son. He was married twice. He actually had two families, didn't he? And this yes. is the very youngest of his children. Yes. Look how serious Hillary, he looks. Hillary, yeah. He looks so serious all yeah. the time. He didn't yeah. seem to be a very he happy He wrote beautiful man. letters to Hillary. Just uh, mm -hmm. some of the letters are portrayed in the. Uh, the uh, play that uh, Fo Phil Funkenbush just was mm -hmm. re recently wrote and mm -hmm. directed, and they're, they're beautiful. His wife was 30 years younger. His second wife. His second yeah. wife, yeah. yeah. 30, yeah. This is, this is a, would a, a stove like this would have been in yes, this home. Definitely. It's not necessarily the same yeah. one. This is, yeah. interestingly, came from Quincy. It was made in, uh, yeah. from the Thomas White Stove Company from Quincy. It was made yeah. in in 1874, I think, wow. and over here it says Rainbow Number 28. So it's the Rainbow uh, series, and this was the 28th stove they made out of Quincy for that. We try <laughs> okay. to keep everything in the home around that uh, mm -hmm. 1880s to 1910 yeah. period. Uh, yeah. It's not easy, but. Uh, and then back here, um, this is, is is where the original kitchen would have yes, been, isn't it? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And you've got that equipped actually also the way yeah, as it would have been mm -hmm. in, the, in the late 1800s mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay now let's um, take a look up here because there was a sleeping loft in a small room and you room would have had here. to have taken a light up with you oh okay because it, sure it was it's dark mm -hmm. okay watch, well, let's, watch your head okay, it is a low low ceiling in it let's go up there So you would have gotten to the sleeping loft first, and they could have put yes. one or two children in yes. here. They could have. Mm -hmm. And then back on into the, and then there's a bedroom. There's one bedroom up here, right? Right. There's uh, one bedroom. Probably two or three children would have been in this bedroom. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, none of the furnishings here actually belong to Edgar Lee Masters, but they're period appropriate. This mm -hmm. is a, a rope bed. It sure uh, is. Yeah. In yeah, fact, uh, if you can, you can kind of give the giveaway is here, real close, real close back here. You can see that the ropes, the ropes right. tied to the uh, yes spindles there. Okay. And we have uh, two storage areas, mm -hmm. alcoves, like back which here. would have been somewhat unusual, mm -hmm. and then a, a large closet. And what's with the dresses that are hanging? Uh, this dress, they say, uh, belonged to Madeline. Edgar Lee Masters' sister, mm -hmm. and uh, the rest of these dresses, they were just donated to us by the, to the, from the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Well, listen, we're going to delve okay. into a little more of this history because Ian, right. Hunt, Ian Hunt of the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum has brought some materials that you all gave them for safekeeping. Yes. So we're going right. to get a chance to look at that, yes. too. Okay. Thank you. Well, Ian Hunt, sometimes it just works out good for two parties. In your case, as, as Director of Acquisitions for the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum, you had a, a, the ability to keep historical documents safe. And, uh, and here at the Edgar Lee Masters home, they had a lot of historical documents that needed to be kept safe. And it kind of worked really good together, didn't it? It did. It, it, it absolutely did. The collections that they had here were phenomenal. Um, hundreds of original handwritten manuscripts, 
uh, unpublished poetry, books that Mr. Masters himself wrote or used in his research. Mm -hmm. It really gives you a, a wonderful window into who this, this man was, who this very famous poet was. And you know what, he was, and, and I didn't know this until you told me this, but when Spoon River Anthology was published, he became the preeminent poet for a very brief time, the preeminent poet in the United States, didn't he? He was. He was sought out by by famous people from all over the world. He was considered a, a, a reincarnation of Walt Whitman. He mm -hmm. was literally thought to be the, the, the poet laureate of the United States. Now, you, I asked you to bring some things, and this is not an easy thing for you to do because you have to, the, the, the um, chain of custody of these items has to be very carefully guarded. So you can bring an assistant with you. Anytime you take something from the museum, you bring an assistant so somebody's always got custody of the items, right? Absolutely. Okay, but you did bring some, and, it, and it's, really, it's really wonderful to see. Um, I wanted to see this letter because this describes how famous he really was. This, he's talking about an audience that he had with President Theodore Roosevelt in a letter to his son here, isn't he? Yes, he is. Uh, he discusses in great detail the fact that, that uh, President Roosevelt had invited him out to the president's personal residence out at Sagmore Hill. And he really, throughout the course of the letter, spends a great deal of time talking to his son about how the president was ignoring a number of politicians who were there to see him over legislation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the president was having so much more fun walking him through the grounds and yeah. talking about what life was like there and, and, yeah. and history in general. Yeah. So he's very happy that mm -hmm. uh, he commands this kind of presence oh, with the president. Sure. Here, now, we, we talk about a lot about Lewiston because uh, the uh, Spoonberg Anthology is written about those buried at Lewiston, but this is where he graduated from high school. This is actually his his diploma, not a copy, it's the actual diploma, isn't it? That is correct. This is his high school diploma from Lewiston, Illinois. Uh, to me, one of the most fascinating aspects of it is the fact that his father, Hardin Masters, was on the school board uh, when, when young Edgar Lee was attending, and his father actually signed as one of the three signatures as having... Uh, as Edgar having completed all of the necessary coursework mm -hmm. to achieve this diploma. Mm -hmm. um, he also became somewhat famous in, in many, a negative way to a lot of people when he wrote Lincoln the Man. Now we mentioned he's, an auto, he's a biographer as well as a poet, but this is a, a book that's in the possession of the home here. And this is a, uh, uh, this is a, uh, uh, I don't think this is a, a particularly 1931 is the uh, date on this book. But what makes this interesting is the fact that he ran into all kinds of uh, n n negativity for writing this book, but he had a reason for doing that. And it was all political, wasn't it? It wasn't personal. He didn't know Lincoln, but it was all political. It was. In, in Edgar Lee's life, uh, the, his biggest hero was his grandfather, Squire Masters. And Squire Masters had actually grown up in this area, had lived in this area, had known Lincoln personally. But his grandfather was a Jeffersonian Democrat. And so in his mind, that became the party, the, the ideals that, that he should follow. Instead of choosing Lincoln, like what most young men around here would have to have idolized, he actually chose Stephen A. Douglas because he thought that Douglas best suited those, those classic <laughs> mm -hmm. Jeffersonian ideals, this notion of small government, less infrastructure, that individuals should be much more reliant upon themselves. Yeah, yeah. So. Lincoln the Man is kind of a scathing attack on all of the problems that Lincoln's uh, election created for the nation, that Lincoln was uh, a swindler, that he mm -hmm. uh, convinced people with his eloquence to go for him when they really should have gone for Stephen Douglas. And, and this Dodd, Mead and Company letter, this is from the publisher of the book, uh, this sort of describes uh, booksellers beware, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I'd never before seen one of these. This one was specifically sent to a book dealer in Chicago. And essentially, the publisher is asking, give the book a chance, despite the fact that you have heard this increasingly negative hatred of this book, mm -hmm. that you really need to... to push this book as much as you can while it's in your bookstore, <laughs> that there were numerous biographies of Lincoln that had initially not been well received and that this would fall mm -hmm. within that same category. They, they specifically state in the letter that it is not so much an attack on Lincoln the man as much as an attack on Lincoln the myth. The reality is it's very much an attack on Lincoln the man. Yeah. Um, Edgar Lee was really just panned by nearly every book reviewer, by every writer 
who just said that it was full of vitriol mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. hatred and animosity, mm -hmm. and it was revisionist history. Yeah. This I'm going to ask you to handle this because this is falling apart. But I always thought that Edgar Lee Masters did his own research because he wrote about all these people from Lewiston and on. But frankly, he had somebody working for him all the time, didn't he? He did. He he understood the necessi the necessity of having good research done. So this is actually a book of research that was done by a local woman by the name of Fern Nance Pond. Uh, she was unique in that she was a direct descendant of one of the New Salem families. Mm -hmm. And literally she would put together uh, various information about what life was like in Menard County, what life had been like in Petersburg in the years leading up to the American Civil War, during the Civil War. So she's writing out all of this information for him so that he has a ready reference to go mm -hmm, to. Mm -hmm. uh, today it would be kind of like having a graduate student who's doing your mm -hmm. research for you while you're concentrating on the actual writing projects. And this is its, its original condition too because the, the paper clips that are in there, they were there when, when, when from, from the very beginning, weren't Correct. they? Correct. You, you can see where the, uh, unfortunately, the paper clips have yeah. rusted onto the next page, but this is obviously a section that the Edgar Lee or Fern Nance Pond herself decided needed to be kept together, mm -hmm. needed to be held as one mm -hmm. section. And, and this, this, this research spans from 1858 to 1863. These are the events that she's discussing. Here. Right. She's talking about Mr. Lincoln at Petersburg. She's talking about... Um, uh, different literature and politics that were being mm -hmm. offered in this era. Uh, she's talking about a local citizen named John Hurt who was elected sheriff uh, by 23 majority. <laughs> 23 wow, votes. your vote does count, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to hand this to you too because I know this is, this is uh, precious too. Um, this is an original manuscript of which there were only uh, uh, several hundred, and this is number 13. This is uh, called Gettysburg, Manila, Acoma, and mm -hmm. it's a book of poems, right? Mm -hmm. And this is number 13, and as we can see, he's, he signed this. Yes, he did. He turned out more than 54 published books during his entire career. None of them were able to match the, the power and the, and the national notoriety of Spoon River anthologies. But poetry, I think, is what he always went back to. Mm -hmm. uh, he tried his hand at different biographies and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Certainly wrote about Lincoln. He wrote about Walt Whitman. But poetry was where he always went back. Yeah, this, yeah. this was his safe zone. As Kathy Olson told us, the next major project here at the Edgar Lee Masters Museum is to fix this, uh, this porch and these stairs. Uh, otherwise, in pretty good shape and open to the public. There's no admission, but they do ask for donations when you come to visit. And if you also want to stay in Petersburg a little bit longer, Edgar Lee Masters is buried up at Oakland Cemetery, and you can visit the grave. With another Illinois Story in Petersburg, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.